Creative Stampers, how are you today? Happy Monday! Sorry I'm a little late, but I am here and I am ready to create a card with you. Hey, do you wish you could create a floral watercolor painting? Do you wish you could just, you know, pick up the watercolors and just paint a beautiful floral bouquet? You can. I'm going to show you today, and let me switch over to my comments, there we are. Um, I, in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a stamp, and we're taking this uh, corner bouquet stamp. I'm going to show you how to make that look like a watercolor painting. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Christina Reese. This is Creating with Christina. I come live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here on my Facebook page. And I love helping card makers overcome their creativity block by teaching art design in my card making tutorials. All right. Um, hey, look at all these people here this morning. Good morning, Debbie Spicer and Linda. Kim and Dorothy. Hey, good morning, good morning. All right, I've got a great card for you today. But before we get into that, let me tell you, um, it is the last month for Celebration, okay? Um, this year, Celebration is only January and February, okay? We're going to have another one in July and August with different product. But what that means is these items here are only available until February to the end of February and you cannot buy these these will never be for sale they are only available with qualifying purchases and I am going to use this one today it, it is corner bouquet and it is free with a $50 purchase and I want to show you this one up close if I can get in there there we go Do you see how that kind of looks like a watercolor painting I'm gonna show you how to do that today oops I almost forgot my light right here hold on there we go. That's a little better, a little brighter. All right. Um, so we are using the corner bouquet today. And like I said, this is the end of celebration. This is the last month. All right. The supplies you need for this card. Oh, wow. Look at those more people. Colleen and Debbie Keller and Nancy. Good morning, you guys. And Debbie's over in Tennessee. I love it. Yes. Happy first day of February. Tomorrow's Groundhog's Day. <laughs> Let's hope spring is coming early for you guys up north. Oh, you, all that snow you guys have been having to deal with. Oh, I know. Down here in Texas, huh, we're pretty good. We were. My husband and I were sitting out by the pool this weekend reading. Of course, we weren't. We were in our jeans and sweatshirts, but we we're still by the pool. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, um, back to our card here. So the supplies I'm using, I have Calypso Coral, four and a quarter by 11, folded in half, okay? Then I have a piece of white card stock here at four and five and a quarter. Now, this is the designer paper I'm using. This comes with a suite that I haven't used much. Um, I, actually, I don't think I've ever used it with you guys. All right, it is the Dragonfly Garden Suite. Um, this stamp set, this punch here. The paper, the paper is so pretty. It's got beautiful colors in it. And there's a lot of tone on tone in here. So this paper could be used for more than just the dragonfly stamps. You can use it with anything you need. Like if you need Calypso Coral for a card, you've got that. You've got the rich razzleberries and there's some dragonflies. Um, yeah, so really beautiful colors, beautiful designs. I love that. All right, and you can see where I've been using it some. So that's the paper we're using today, Dragonfly Garden, or Dandy Garden, I think it's called. And what else? Let me look at my list here. Ah, this die set, if you all don't own it, I would strongly encourage you because these scalloped rectangles and these stitch shapes here, I use them almost every card. Um, the, it is such a great value. You can have a little stitched scalloped rectangle for a sentiment or all the way up here, and this is almost the whole size of a card. So, I mean, and then it just layers. So you could do different colors of layers, and then, I mean, it's just so pretty. And then these two kind of stack on top of each other, and these two stack on top of each other. I love it. So we're using rectangles, and we're going to use that shape today. So that's called Stitch So Sweetly Dies. And what else are we using today? Oh! The most important thing, <laughs> watercolor paper. All right, so to get this effect, this watercolor painting effect, you have to have watercolor paper. And you're also going to need some water. 
and I have this misty uh, uh, spritzer and it sprays a fine mist. You don't want a water bottle sprayer. Um, you need one that really sprays a very fine mist. So you want a spritzer like this. And you're going to need the right stamp and write markers. All right. So stamp and write. And we have we have all 55. I'm sorry, all 50 colors in these markers here. Um, you buy them in. You can buy them all at once in a big bundle, or you can buy them in the different color families. So like you can buy the brights, the regals, the subtles, the neutrals, um, and they come in packages. We don't sell them individually. So you have to buy them in families or the whole entire box. I'm using the Bumblebee from our new in colors and I'm using Old Olive and I'm using Rich Razzleberry. And so I picked the colors that go with the paper. So I'm using those and is that it? Okay, yes, so that's that. Now let's put this card together. You all ready? Here we go. First, let's do our layers real quick to get this out of the way. So I've got my stamp and seal here, and I'm just, and I want to remind you all how to use this. So if you have a stamp and seal, you go, whoops, take my lid off. You go straight across, okay? Whoops, straight across, okay. Maybe you don't, just kidding. Straight across, there we go. Then you tilt it back and flick it out. Okay, so straight across, then tilt it back and flick it out. And what that does is it breaks it off right there um, and it doesn't stretch and get the gump, gooey gump back inside here, which when you get that back there, then it causes the tape to start sticking to itself and then you get a tangled mess inside there and it's a disaster. So <laughs> that is the trick to the Stampin' Seal. All right, we're putting this on here. We're just centering it. And this is uh, four by five and a quarter. Okay, four by five and a quarter. Now our uh, dragonfly paper is cut down at three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. I just want an itty bitty bit of that white showing. And of course you could cut out the center here um, to save this white part. I know a lot of people like to save um, their white paper. Okay, so you go that way and then you just lean back and you flick it off. Okay, and make sure I'm putting this on correctly. All right, so we have our card base ready for creating our card. Let's put that over to the side and bring out our watercolor paper. All right, this is how we do this. So we have our floral, our corner bouquet here, and we're going to flip it over and we're going to color it. And I'm going to start with the green. Actually, I take that back. I'm starting with the yellow. You always want to start with the yellow because getting the green and the yellow is no big deal because green is made with yellow. But getting or getting the yellow and the green. But getting the green and the yellow is not good because it's really hard to get it off of the, the tip. So you always want to go with your lightest color. Whoops, and you want the paintbrush side. All right, so we're just coloring our flowers. Okay, just throwing some color on there. Okay. Wherever you see flowers, they go down here, they go over here. And all right, so I colored all the flowers. And then I'm coming in with the green and I'm going over all of the stems and leaves and grass and when you're working with it up close you can see all of this you all might not be able you may think it looks like a jumbled mess but um, I can actually see where all the blades are so I know that I'm painting correctly okay I know this takes a while but be patient just get your color on there and it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, watercolor paint, that's the cool thing about watercolor paintings. Um, they're, they're real um, blurry, okay? Um, the artists that know how to make watercolor look like a real-life photograph, that, that's just genius. <laughs> I, don't, I can't even imagine being able to watercolor like that. So most watercolors you see are real blurry there because the, the water bleeds out and it, it blurs everything. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're just going to make all this ink get real watery before we stamp it. All right, I can't 
can't remember if I put any yellow. I think I missed that. Okay. I am going to throw some of this rich razzleberry in here too. So I think I missed that with rich razzleberry. Um, and I know I colored some of these yellow, but I'm going to come back in here with the razzleberry and color some of them. Okay. All right. And then very carefully, I want to come back over these with the yellow, make sure I got yellow on these, but real careful. You don't want to get that rich razzleberry on your yellow tip. Okay. And you definitely don't want that green on there. Okay. All right. Now, here's the trick. Okay. Take your mister, and you all probably won't be able to see this very well because I'm going to have to pull my arm way out. Well, actually, I can switch views. Here we go. So I'm taking my block. There, y'all can see it. I take my mister, and I just get a couple of squirts on there. Don't get it real saturated. Just a couple of mists. Okay, come back. All right, and now take my watercolor paper. I take my stamp, and I lay it down, and I just press it and let that water just sink into that watercolor paper. Oh, thank you, Debbie, for sharing. Um, would you all help me out? Would you all share this video with your friends? Um, it would just help get the get it out there in Facebook land so other people can find us and they can join us on um, in the mornings while we do this. Because it's so much fun to have lots of people to, um, talking with each other. And I love how you guys are becoming friends. And um, it's just the best thing. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> Let me pull it up. Now, it is, um, there you can see that. I want to get those yellow flowers a little more yellow. And there is another stamp right here. Okay, so I'm going to take my yellow stamp pad. This is Bumblebee. I'm sorry, Bumblebee stamp pad. And I'm going to come in here and just dab Where all those are, and that's okay. Okay. All right, that looks better. Um, and also the rich razzleberry. Let's get um, those a little more. I don't think I got quite enough water on here, but that's okay because where's my rich razzleberry? Come on, where are you? I know I had you out. Did I put you back? Yes, I did. I put it back. <laughs> Here we go. All right, let's get some of these flowers in. And there we go. And not, of course, watercolor paper has texture, so it's not going to be a real um, clear image anyways because of that. Okay, there we go. All right, I like that. There we go. The more water you put on it, the more watercolor it looks so I didn't get enough water. I want to show you this one I made this morning. See how that the green really looks like watercolor there? All right compared to this one. All right so um, yeah you definitely want to make sure you have enough water on there. Um, you can add water afterwards with a paintbrush. Here I've got some uh, a paintbrush right here. But I don't have any water. Ah, let's see if this would work. No, you really need water. But anyways, you would just come in with your paintbrush and just kind of dab it around. And, and that would help make it look like a watercolor painting too. All right. Next for our card, um, we're going to quickly finish putting this together. And we need, what do we need? Our stitches. There we go. <laughs> right. And I have, all right, I've already cut this piece out. Come here. I've already cut this piece out, and that is my largest stitch shape right there. So I want the second largest one for my floral. And now I, uh, of course, the floral doesn't fit completely in here, but that's okay because I don't really want it to. Um, I am going to cut off some of the floral on the edges so that I have more white space up here for my dragonfly. All right, let me throw this through the embossing machine. And of course, this one's a little big for my tiny mini one. So I have to get out my big one, but that's okay. All right. There we go. 
Debbie says, I always wondered how that was done. Yeah. All right, I'm not going to connect this on here yet because I need to tie some string. But I am putting this on our card first. And then we're going to tie some linen thread. So let me get this on here. And I'm kind of putting it over to the left a little so that I have room for my bow on this side. Okay, and I'm centering it top and bottom here. All right, I got that. Now, like I said, this is a part of the Dragonfly Suite. It is the Mossy Meadow Linen Thread. So cool looking, isn't that cool? And we are just going to take it. Okay, and we're actually not gonna tie, tie a bow, we're gonna tie a knot, so let me that way there we go and even though I'm tying a knot not a bow I still like my clamping tweezers to hold it so it stays tight okay and is that which way I want it yeah I'm trying to remember how to do a square knot <laughs> you know I actually was a sailor and I knew all my knots back when I was younger I haven't been on a boat in, gosh, years. Over. So I've been married 15 years, so over 15 years I have not been on a boat. That's sad. Okay, I'm clipping the knot down, and I'm going to do something to this thread. This is another fun thing to do. And you know what? We need to zoom in a little so y'all can see what I'm doing here. All right, what I'm doing is I'm taking the pick, and I am pulling these threads apart. Okay, it's a it's a woven thread, so you have to kind of start at the top and then work your way down. But once you do, then you have all of these frayed pieces. <laughs> there we go. Isn't that cute? I just I loved learning new things to do with my products. I mean, you know, linen thread's pretty, and you buy it, um, but then you get tired of it. But here is a new thing you can do with it. So it looks new, so it looks like a new product, okay? So there we go, we just kind of shredded it, and so now we have this cool little knot. <laughs> All right, now that we have our thread on here, and my linen thread got all twisted, hold on. Make sure that's, okay. So you want it flat here. It's okay if it's twisted here because I'm going to put the bouquet on top right there. And I need, of course, dimensionals. Oh, I'm so glad you asked that, Debbie. No, 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 no. Do not ever use your alcohol markers on your stamps. They don't, they will just stain your stamps and they won't come off onto the paper at all. Okay? Yeah, alcohol blends are not for rubber. Yeah, do not. Oh, I'm so glad you asked me that. I actually have that in my notes, and I totally forgot to tell you all that. Yes, only water-based ink goes on your stamps, okay? Unless you want it to be permanent, which you don't. <laughs> all right, here we go, and we're just going to center that like that, okay? And then we can move our little knot over, okay? Come on. There we go. All right, so we have our little knot there. We're gonna put a dragonfly here, and the dragonfly, so we have this dragonfly paper. Whoa, goodness gracious, everything's falling. That actually goes with the punch. Now you can stamp the dragonfly, oh, I need to zoom back out. Um, you can stamp the dragonfly and punch it out, or you can get the dragonfly from the paper. And these little baby dragonflies go with the baby one, and the big one. So. How you do this though, so you don't mess up all your dragonflies, is you cut out the dragonfly you want. Come here. And then you use a post-it note, a sticky pad, sticky paper, okay? To cut it out. Of course, I'm trying to save all these itty bitty dragonflies, but that's all right, okay. And turn our punch over, okay? Um, remember your paper goes in this side and the tail's back there, so I know my dragonfly needs to go in this way. So I'm gonna get a, a sticky paper. If I can find my sticky pad, here it is. 
and I'm going to use this to hold my dragonfly while I put it inside my punch. Come on, come on. There we go. Now I've covered up some of the dragonfly, but I can tell oops, by the tail. Make sure I'm in the right place. Here we go. <laughs> and just peel off this sticky paper. There we go. So we have our cute little dragonfly. And we also have this little yellow dragonfly that popped out, but we're not going to use that. Okay. And we need some dimensionals on this guy. Or girl. Dragonflies. I don't know. Are they girls or guys? I guess there's both kinds. <laughs> I'm such a goof. All right. Um... Let's have her flying off this way. There we go. It's a pretty rich Razzleberry dragonfly. One last thing, we need our sentiment. So where's my white scrap? Here's my white scrap. And the sentiment says, may good things grow all year long. So that's a great uh, birthday wish. Um, put it on the outside and the inside you can put happy birthday. And I think I will do this in, let's see, Mossy Meadow, Rich Razzleberry, Blue. There's a little bit of blue. Black. I'm trying to decide. I think we're going to go with black. Okay, and of course I don't see my black ink. <laughs> there it is. And here we go. Now, I can use my baby, um, my little mini embossing machine. You all who have not seen the mini embossing machine, oh my gosh, it's so precious. It's just the itty bittiest thing. Okay, here we go. Can you see it? Yeah, you can. You can see it really well. All right, let me back out my... When I store it, I store it with the plates underneath there to keep them flat. All right, and one plate you should designate for cutting because the metal of the dies will cut into this plastic and eventually it'll start to look like this one. Okay, let me show you this one here. Come here. All right, see, I've cut into this so many times you can't even see shapes anymore, where I've only cut a couple of times on this one, but that's okay, that's what it's for. So when you hear that cracking, it's not cracking, it's just the die cutting into the plastic. And then you wanna keep your flat, your top one clear so you can always see through it, okay? And here is my sentiment, and where is my die? I'm using, come here. There we go. I have this little die here. And if it doesn't want to stay, you can use some, let's see, twist it. Oops, yeah, it's uh, washi tape. Washi tape is your friend in this situation because it may move and you don't want it to move when you're on a, uh, when you're doing words like that because you don't want any of your words cut off. So we want to make sure that die stays in place. So you're learning all kinds of things from me today. All right, that looks, that looks good, all right. And put this one on top, make a little sandwich, and crank. And just, it's just a little bitty. And it's so light, it's like you can just pick it up with a finger. <laughs> okay, that's the mini embossing machine. Everybody should have one. So fun. And here we go with our sentiment. Huh? Oh, that paper is really sticky. Be careful when you, even though it's washi tape, it still could tear your paper. So be real careful when you're peeling it off. And there we go. Hey, Karen from Michigan. I love Michigan. I got to go to um, Isle Royal one year. Um, oh my gosh, it was, but you know what? It was 95 degrees that summer on the island. And of course they don't have air conditioning up there. Ah, that was really hot. <laughs> we were like, wait a minute, we got away from Texas. We went to Michigan to get cooled off from Texas, but oh well, but it was still really cool. It's the first time I saw moose also when I was on Isle Royal. All right, back to our card. Here we go. And we're just going to put this little guy right there. So we need 
two things. Because we are, our watercolors up, we want to stick it there, but we want this to be raised also, but we don't want this side to be raised or to be lopsided. So um, we are just going to put one on this side and then we'll put a little adhesive on the other side, okay? So where's my stamp and seal? There we go. And we are finished. What do you guys think? <laughs> so this was ours that we didn't, like I said, I didn't quite get enough water on there, but it still looks pretty. Let me show you the one I did this morning though. Um, this one got a lot of water on it, so make sure you get enough water, but not so much water that it just goes everywhere. Okay, so you can see the two different ones. I'm trying to pull it up close so you can see them. All right, and so there you are. What do you guys think? <laughs> do you like it? Um, before I go, though, let me do a couple of reminders. Remember that celebration ends... Here it is. Okay. Our celebration, it, this is the last month for celebration. And there's one thing in the celebration that I have not talked about very much. And that is this page right here. The Join Stampin' Up! page. Now, people join Stampin' Up! for a hundred different reasons. One reason is they get because of the great value um, that's involved. And I am desperately looking. Oh, there it is. I had it in front of me. So... Whenever we have a joining sale, we get a lot of people who sign up because, first of all, it's only $99, and you get to choose $125. So if you wanted the large embossing machine, it is $120, and then you could pick, like, some rhinestones for $5. You cannot go over $125. You can go up to $125. That's $99 plus tax, but you also get a paper pumpkin. You get the free shipping. And during the special promotion, you get over 200 sheets of paper in every single color that we make. So this one is the Settles paper pack. It's in a complete pack of paper. Um, this will be $11.50 in the new annual catalog that comes out in June. Um, you can get it right now for free when you sign up. And this is uh, Highland Heather and Mint Macron. This is our neutral, so that's gray granite and crumb cake. Then this one is our brights. That is Flirty Flamingo and Granny Apple Green. This is our new no, this one is our, let's see, that's Brights. Yeah, this has got to be our new, no, wait a minute. Lot, this is the new in colors, because that is Magenta Madness, and that is Misty Moonlight. So this is, uh, oh, Regals. Okay, Regals. This is Real Red and uh, Crushed Curry. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> so uh, when you sign up, and uh, this paper is only available till the end of February, but like I said at the beginning of this uh, video, so what I do is um, I come live on my Facebook and you all find me and then you love the product and you buy the product from me. Then I take the percentage that I earn from that and I use it to buy supplies. So by just that little bit, I have plenty of money to buy my own paper and stamps and ink and everything I want. And I have so much fun sharing my tutorials with you all. So it is a great way to get a little extra money to buy supplies. Because I know everybody wishes they had more money to buy supplies. But then there's also another way to quote unquote earn money. And that is by the savings. When you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you get 20% off everything in the catalog. Every time you place an order. So... And then when you uh, sell more and more, um, I'm up to saving 26% on all of mine. Well, I actually earn 26% and I save 26. I get to be a customer and a demonstrator at the same time. There's no other uh, direct sales company that does that. It's so amazing. Anyways, I've talked enough about that. I didn't want to spend the whole time. And um, yes, Debbie, you can sign up again. So, um, but you have to wait. So like I have one lady who... Um, she just, she's bought enough of her own stuff. She's a hobby demonstrator. She's bought enough stamps, enough ink and everything, and she's ready to stop. And she said, but she really loves getting the discount. And I said, well, don't worry. We're going to have another promotion in July, and you can sign up in July. 
Yeah, so you have to wait like a couple months. I'm not sure exactly the time when you drop and when you can join again, but you can just get the dis you can just get the celebration um, right now, then not do anything with it and drop. And then the next time we have one, you can sign up again. And you just keep signing up and dropping and signing up. They don't care because they know that most of the demonstrators are hobby demonstrators. They just do it for their own discount and for their own pleasure of stamping. And uh, and then there's crazy people like me who like uh, do videos and sell. <laughs> Anyways, you guys are so awesome. Thank you so much for staying with me this morning. And remember, um, I want you to go and try this technique. So you need watercolor paper, you need um, a mister, and you need some water-based markers. Okay, and then color in your, your stamp and mist it and stamp it on the watercolor paper and make a really cool card. Okay, I can't wait to see them. And when you do make your card, please stay, uh, post them over on our uh, group. Our group is Create Christina's Creative Stampers. This page that you're on is uh, Creating with Christina. It's my public page, business page. But we have a private group um, called Christina's Creative Stampers where it's just the, just us. We're posting our own stuff and nobody else can see it but us and it's really fun. All right. Wow. I have really talked too much. It's 31 minutes. You all have a blessed Monday. I will be back here Wednesday and don't forget we have our card challenge. Okay. We have our card challenge and um, I've got a great card challenge for you coming up Wednesday um, using this stamp set and you're going to want to definitely be here Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> Bye you guys.